if I have a rotten day at work or I'm in a bad mood, that's the best time for me to play a video because then I take it out on those little sounds and like nobody's business and I cause absolute destruction on that screen. Skillful, interesting, possibly exciting game. It's not a pin table. I mean, it, it is a, a rather complex television set with a load of uh, little logic board or programming. It's very good fun, a bit like a sort of uh, TV tennis, a slightly more uh, exotic tennis? example. You can't call... No, no, I'm sorry. I'm over you cannot call it TV tennis. It's very, very complicated. Comparing it with the first Space Invaders, they've come a long way. Pins to me, though, are just the paramount amusement machine. The videos, I think, are a good... No, not a very good second, but a second. Other machines, like fruit machines and that, just sort of shrink to insignificance. Yeah. But I think pins are, are the lords of the amusement machine. It's a phenomenal machine because as you, as you score um, on the top and through the targets, you get this piece going up the lights, and basically the idea is to get the, the top unit as high as possible. It's also a good game. It's got five bumpers. It's got a very unusual flipper design as well with the two flippers and a piece in the middle and a drop target, which is quite unusual at the time it came out. Yeah, and you've got targets on motors as well. And if you hit both of them, it puts the top, cent the top um, target, which is in the middle, up. Uh, it's a drop target, basically, which is common now. It's like, as I said, I've just got it up then. I mean, I'm on warm and hot. And each time you, when you get on hot, you like the top bump to give 100 points, which is a high score in the machine of this sort of age. machines purely because they're valuable. It doesn't matter whether they're good or not, you know, purely for money. Then you get a really good collector is into pins. Into pins, that's all they're into. itself at two in Broadway you've got the lots of fun arcade it still is even to this day it's called the lots of fun and it, it was lots of fun to be in there they used to have ooh, I think they, they would have about 30 40 machines in there but uh, it was it was terrific guys terrific
radios have suddenly arrived out of nowhere. Pin tables have got a history, you know, they go back in time. You can never just destroy something that has a history. Instead of having a normal scoring system, you gamble on the horses, and whichever horse gets to the finish first wins, and you get a certain number of replays according to how you've positioned it. On to another machine, again a Williams 1958, again a wooden railer, more conventional, but this is before the normal type of digital scoring. So here we have it scoring in lights and the Queen cool Williams <laughs> cable. 1964 World's Fair, Rather unusual with a spinning feature that not only puts out certain numbers, but also lights other features as well. So Williams, hitting certain bumpers, advances the arrow right or left, which again lights various features on the deck. Now onto Williams 2 player. Again, the animated backflash. This time the puck moves that way for first player, that way for the second player, and again you get a number of goals. So not only do you get replays on the score, but also replays on the goals. Another machine with a rather unusual backflash. There's Williams Expo. They're obviously getting jealous. It's a rather interesting Bally 4 player this time. Bally have always been known for the innovative. Mm. <laughs> They're rather unusual ideas and uh, very progressive concepts in pinball design. Which I can just illustrate to you. It's this alligator gate. When the ball's in that area, you press the button and it pulls it down, and various scoring features work from there. Here we have a classic machine from Bally. Very, very powerful. You get a ball in. into lots of fun arcade and uh load of wallies in there again that's being taken over by space invaders i suppose what it is those with a bit of skill have died out and they're giving idiots a chance those on the end of the queue my boys have the space invader they have a knock at me it's friendly but it's just an argument that always stands which has the skill the space invader is so limited Defender thinks, quite simply, is that thing thinks. You've got to be like that, you know? You've got to be really into it, really part of that machine. That is the attraction, that sheer lock of minds. <laughs> you know, you move with your ship. You don't move your, just your hands, you are the ship. That's how you get the high points. It's so hypnotic. It's so enticing, you have to watch it. In fact, if I see a good player, now, I have to watch the machine because I can't, just can't believe what I'm seeing. If you see someone who really can deal with those betas and those swarmers with ease and really can go in and out of them, and treat them like what they ought to be treated, and just blown up. Once, when I've got to 200,000, I had cramp in my middle finger, because when you're really going, you, I suppose you really don't realise how fast your fingers are moving.
defending that last post, that's where the major attraction is, well, for me, is you've got one humanoid left, so you're going to defend that like hell. And those things which are going to try and destroy that humanoid are coming at you like hell and are coming at it like hell. So you've got to do some really fancy flying and some really fancy defending. <laughs> Once they've picked up all the little posts and the last post hit the screen, it's just like a, well, just like a nuclear explosion that everything blows to bits and everything is mutants and hell and swarmers and it's just diabolical mayhem, you know. I've known mutants to be very stubborn in being destroyed. I really fear them. I don't mind any of the other pieces. I can get blown up by the, uh, the swarmers and the baiters and be annoyed, but it's those mutants they are so snidey, they are so clever, and they are so full of themselves that they are almost human. I feel I'm playing a living machine. A living machine. With a video, I'm just playing a machine. Pins aren't as contrived. Videos may be skillful in certain ways, but they're much more contrived. Everything's more programmed. A pin table, all right, the basic game layouts there, yeah. But, each, but you never know what's going to happen. No one can actually say when, that, when you flick that ball, it's going to do this, this, and this. <laughs> You've got, the only choice you've got with a pinball machine is whether you flip that flipper or not. There's no mind to fight against. You're just, you're just fighting against nature and its laws. And if, you happen, if the ball goes in a certain area where you can't get it, you can't get it, and that's it. I don't like pinball machines. They're just... Well, they're, they are antiquated. <laughs> After time, with the space invader and that stupid noise it makes, not only turn it off, I'd rather smash it to pieces. It's an idiot box, space invader, so that's where it belongs. Should be all put in a rocket, shot up and left up there for the other moon mad to play. Not us, they're nutters machines. Oh, oh, oh. 